Hey everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host Mr. Rivers. That's right, we're back again with another pre-release kit of War of the Spark. We're going to do a little build and I'm going to put the code off to the side and give it away at a later date. So if you haven't had your free draft on Arena yet, well, you could get one from me if you didn't get one from your own pre-release or if you weren't able to play in the pre-release. Lots of options. Lots of options. So let's get right into it. We're going to open it up. Of course, the reason we pick these up is because, um, well, I mean, you get a foil planeswalker guaranteed in every kit. And then not only that, but you also get a nice sweet little die. And you get six packs. All right, so there's our six packs. And we're going to like, um, we're going to take out our token here. That's our token with our code on it. So we're going to put that off to the side there, like so. And then I like to try and keep this secret. It's kind of hard um, to keep it secret due to the way that it's placed in the box. But let's see if we can't. Yeah, there we go. We know it's we know one of them is blue, but we don't know if the blue is the planeswalker or whether it's the rare because I didn't see that far. And then of course you get your little thing here with. Your like how to build your pre-release deck and all that kind of jazz and then a little bit of flavor. Fine. No biggie deal there. And then we get these six packs right here. Let's open them up. Let's open them up and do a little bit of a build, right? I mean, we won't do a full build, but we'll do like a little bit of a discussion. So let me move these down here and we'll get these cards rolling up here. So white and blue and red. What do we got here? Evolution Sage. That's a standout. Mist Folk Herald. Oh my goodness, we got a Ral to start things off. All right. And we got a Foil Rare in our first pack. Plain Wide Celebration. Uh, I don't know if this is any good in Limited. Let's see. Five mana, two green. So five mana, green, green. Choose four. You may choose the same mode more than once. Create a 2-2 two -two citizen token that is all colors. Create tar uh, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Proliferate or you gain four life. Um, that seems like it might be okay in limited as a as a sort of like a, you know, a change the board state kind of card. Okay, are we back? I think we're back. The camera died on me again. What a surprise. What a surprise. I, I'm still working out all the kinks with these cameras. I don't know what to do. Um, anyway. <laughs> okay. We, we don't, I haven't even opened up the next pack yet. So luckily it died in between like me opening a pack or me finishing a pack and talking about it and opening the next. So hopefully this all cuts together pretty nice and we can get there. Let's see what else we get here. Okay. I've found that Bond of Revival is not terrible. We got Narset. And Deliver Unto Evil, which, to be honest, I haven't really seen it performing very well. Every time I've had someone play it against me, or I, I've had it in my pool. I just haven't had, like, the need or want to play it. I don't know, you really need to have, like, four bombs in your graveyard for it to be, like, a useful thing. Ashiok, though, it's very, very good. Ashiok's very good in limited. And we got a Tulsimir. Nice. And a foil... Thundering Saratok. Okay. All right. And you heard we probably, you probably heard that. We got a secret, I guess. Which means my phone's like, yo, it's time for me to, to sing you the song of my people. So let me just mute that so that we don't get that in the background anymore. Let's continue along here. All right. Okay. So far, we haven't really seen any fixing. Wanderer's Strike, very good. We haven't seen a lot of removal in black, either. 
Invade the city. Flux Channeler. And that's three uncommons, which means we have a rare Planeswalker here. Flux Channeler. Very, very good. Ooh, Chandra. All right. Okay. And an Angel Token and an Island. Okay. So we could very well be looking at some sort of, like, Teamer Proliferate build. Might be okay. We'll have to see. Because, like, p to be honest, our black hasn't seen amazing. Like, we do have an Obnix now, which is not terrible. Jaya's Greeting is good, so it's totally lost. That's fine. Se a crew Celebrant is, like, fine, I guess. It's not amazing. Um, 10th District Legionnaire. Again, another rare Planeswalker here, because that's another three uncommons. Rescuer Finx is very good. And we got a Teferi? Holy moly. What are we going to do here? <laughs> this this bundle is something else. This bundle is something else. I guess not even a bundle, it's a pre-release kit. I think we're looking at possibly doing, like, I, I want to say Teamer. Like, it, it looks pretty strong right now. But we're getting some pretty sweet black in these last couple packs. Davriel is very, very good as well. Solar Blaze is kind of like mediocre. Um, I've seen it do work. I'm not particularly fond of it, but like I've seen it do work for sure. So like... Pulsemir is definitely very playable, but you have to be in green-white pretty heavily. Um... Plain wide celebration, I'm not sure about. And Teferi is obviously very playable, so like maybe you end up going like Jeskai and go white, red, blue. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. We gotta look at our promos too and see. So Johnny's Pride Mate is is like fine, but not only if you have life gain, and there isn't a whole heck of a lot of life gain in this in this set. There is some, just not a whole heck of a lot. Right? So like Charm Stray. Not very playable, unless you have multiples, and even then, even with multiples, still not great. Defiant Strike is, like, okay in limited. It's not amazing. Law Rune Enforcer is fine. Teo's Light Shield is kind of like a filler card, so if you need a 3-drop. Um, the interesting thing about it is it's an 0-3, but it's not a defender. It's just an 0-3. So, like, it's... It can still attack, so you can put the 1-1 one -one counter on itself and still swing with it. Enforcer Griffin is, like, okay. Wanderer Strike is is definitely good. Loxodon Sergeant is kind of okay. Rally rally of Wings. Untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. Um, I feel like this is good, but only in the right deck. Like, if you have a lot of flyers, like, if you're playing, like, blue-white flyers, this card's great. Um, right now, our, our uh, white cards are, none of them are flyers. Makeshift Battalion seems pretty decent. Battlefield Promotion is not great. Divine Arrow is good. I don't think we play a second Teo. Yeah. So, like, our white is kind of, like, mediocre, I think. We have some okay removal. Like, we have Divine Arrow and we have Wanderer Strike, which would be okay. Worth, like, you know, those would be okay to splash along with Teferi, right? So, like, these two would be okay to splash with Teferi. So, I think the rest of our white is kind of, like, mediocre. I don't think we're playing it, but we'll see. Uh, Thunder Drake is fine. Uh, no Escape is good. Rescuer Finx is good. Totally Lost is good. Aven Eternal is okay. I don't know if you play a second copy of No Escape. It's kind of iffy. I think it's good in a, in certain situations. You can definitely sideboard it in for sure um, in the right uh, against the right opponents. Uh, Flux Channeler, very, very good. Re uh, Relentless Advance is kind of like an interesting card. It's not, like, super amazing. If you have a lot of a mass, it's very good. Um, and you've got Eternal Skylord as well, which is good for a mass dex. Uh, Wall of Runes is kind of, like, mediocre. Contingent, uh, contentious Plan is also decent. Callous Dismissal is fine. We have two of those. And we have two Crushed Descents. So, like, our blue is actually pretty strong. Because, I mean, like, you can play... Okay, so a mass, a mass... Uh, proliferate draw a card, a mass with a maker of a zombies flyers, proliferate, a mass, totally lost, return a dude, no escape, thunder drake, a mass, a mass, a mass. So I mean like a lot of our blue has a mass in it, which is pretty nice. So let's take a look at our black. 
Uh, Eternal Taskmaster, very good. Vraska's Finisher, also very good. Spark Reaver, also very good. Obnixilis Cruelty, decent. Dust Mantle Operative, it's a, it's a bear that can't be blocked by big things. It's fine filler if you need a two drop. Um, Davriel's Shadow, Fu uh, Shadow Fuge, not not amazing. Not not particularly amazing. Um, Charity Extractor is like an okay f like filler. I'm not huge on it. Um, I've seen a lot of people playing it just because it has a big butt. It's a 1-5. It's okay. Spark Harvest, very good. Herald of the Dreadhorde, also fine. Aid the Fallen. This card has actually done a lot of work for me when I've played it because it gives you a creature and a Planeswalker. So it's definitely worth playing, I think. Um, and then, like, you have the Shriek, Shriek Diver, which is fine. I think you would probably play, like, one of these Dusk Mantle operatives if you need to. Um, other than that, like, the black is, you know, not terrible. Like, and the Bond of Revival might be okay depending on what deck you come up against. If you come up against a deck that has a lot of removal, it's probably all right. Um, let's see. Yeah, like, the black's not terrible. The black is not terrible. And you get Davriel as well, which is very good. I mean, Ashiok's fine because you're playing blue, so you can definitely put it in. Like, put it in there. No big deal. Okay, so red. Jaya's Greeting, very good. Burning Prophet, very good. Turret Ogre, very good. Cyclops, Electromancer. Uh, this one's okay. So it's... Uh, when it comes in, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls where X is the number of sorceries and instants in your graveyard. So, it, like, it can definitely, like, remove a big thing off the table if you have enough things in the graveyard. Chandra's Pyrohelix is fine. Same as Sprint is, like, kind of not really what this deck is looking to do. So our red is kind of, like, not super great. We have two Chain Whip Cyclopses, which are, like, okay in an aggro deck, but really we're not playing an aggro deck. We're trying to play, like, kind of like a controly long game deck. Kind of mid-range, right? So, like, the uh, Nahiri Stoneblades and Samus Sprint and the two Blind Blasts and the two Chain... Like, they're kind of not really what we're looking to do with this deck. Right, so maybe the red is the splash? I don't know. We'll have to see. Because, I mean, like, Chandra is, like... Like, Chandra is very, very good in limited. Um, and Ral is decent. But we could be playing, like, a blue-white splash red deck. Who knows? Like, maybe that en ends up being what is better. Let's see. Courage and Crisis is fine. Uh, Centaur Nurturer is actually very good in limited for fixing your colors. Um, it's a 2-4, which is a big butt. And it gives you 3 life when it comes into play. Not terrible. I'm not a big fan of the Ward Scale Crocodile. It's okay. The Cron Trangler is fine, but only if you have things to, like, pump it up with. And we do have 2 Thundering Ceratox, which is, like, not terrible to go with those. But they're not, like, particularly amazing. Um, Return to Nature is fine. Challenger Troll is actually very good. It's a 6-5 five for 5. Pretty decent. Band Together, good, good removal. So, I mean, like, we put the Challenger Troll, we put the Vivian... Um, another Courage, which is very good. And then, of course, we have the Evolution Sage, which is just really, really good in any any deck, to be honest. Just because it proliferates when you drop mana. Um, and then, of course, we have this Guild Globe, Mana Geode, and Pestermite. Or Pr Prismite, I should say. This is not playable, in my opinion. It's pretty, pretty garbage. Um, the Guild Globe is, like, okay. It's really, like, only if you need it in a pinch. The Mana Geode is definitely very good. Um, the Ugin's Con Conjurant goes into, like, any deck, so there is that. Um, I think, right now, the strongest we have is probably looking like a blue-white-black mix. Which is interesting, because our red's not super strong. Like, we have, sh we have Ral and Chandra, but other than that, we don't have a whole heck of a lot that kind of goes in there. And if we go, like, white, blue, black, we can play, like, the Cruel Celebrant... Um, and we can play all of our walkers pretty much except for these two. But I mean, like, we could splash red pretty easily with the mana geode. I don't know, that's tough. I don't know if we want to be playing green. Like, green seems okay, but it doesn't seem amazing. Like, if we had another centaur nurturer or, like, one of the 2-1 hexproof uh, elves that makes any color mana, I'd be more inclined to go green and splash the good stuff from the other colors. Um, let's take a look at what our promos are, right? Because I think we saw this is okay. So our our pro, our stamped rare is commence the end game, which is just a bonkers card in blue. Like this is really good for the blue deck. So we're definitely playing blue. Um, it's just a matter of whether we're playing white or red with it, or maybe we're playing white red. Like we're definitely playing blue and possibly like 
red or white or black or maybe any combination of those three. Um, and then, holy moly, we got a Jace, a stamped Jace. Well, uh, I, I mean, Jace is okay in limited, uh, mainly because your deck is small. But at the same time, like, it's not really a great plan, to be honest. Um, to be milling yourself. Um, but I mean, he's playable, I guess, in the fact that he's a Planeswalker. Um, and he lets you draw cards, get through your deck faster. So if you have ways to, like, bring the stuff back from your graveyard that you want... Uh, to like you know make sure you get your bombs back and stuff then yeah fine I didn't I thought that if you got I thought I thought that if you got a rare planeswalker your other thing would be another planeswalker like an uncommon I thought you would get two planeswalkers in this but I guess it's I guess it's you always get a stamped rare regardless like rare or mythic and then you always get a stamped planeswalker and the planeswalker can be any rarity so that's interesting. So you could actually end up with a double mythic in this pack then. Is that what I'm understanding? Because you could end up with a mythic stamped and a mythic planeswalker stamped. That's pretty bonkers. Huh. Well, we're definitely playing blue. It's just a matter of what we're playing blue with, right? Because even this, like this, uh, does this amass? It does, right? Yeah, draw two cards, then amass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. We're definitely playing that. We're definitely playing blue, and we're doing an amass deck. So the question is, is like, do we want to play the black? Do we have enough amass in black that we want to like? I mean, not really. We don't. We don't necessarily have a lot in black to amass, but um, we could be playing like blue red because we do have the invade the city here, which is another amass card. Right? And, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, like, we could be playing, like, blue-red so that we could play these, which I think is very good. Like, these are definitely bombs. We just don't get to play the Davriel, then, which is actually not terrible. And then we could splash the Teferi because we can splash the Teferi with one white. That's not a big deal. There's not a whole... And then, I mean, like, you could just splash the Divine Arrow and the Wanderer Strike if you want or just the Wanderer Strike because the Divine Arrow is just too early. But, like, you could definitely do this, right because like what's our red our red's not like super crazy like we don't have really any amass in red which is kind of not great but at the same time our blue is so strong that the red can just be a splash for chandra and ral seems okay right yeah yeah it's definitely definitely probably that's definitely where i would go with this i would go like a blue red even though like the black has some decent removal in it right it has spark harvest and obnix I think, I think the red is stronger with the with the planeswalkers, to be honest. And I mean, the only thing you miss out on is the removal spells from black and like Davriel, right? Wherever we put them down here, right? Like we miss out on an aid the fallen. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there you go, everybody. That was kind of like the little walkthrough. I guess this is really you really can't see that. So there, there it is. That's commence the end game, and of course, more importantly, that Jace right there. Look at that bad boy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been your host, Mr. Rivers. This has been a little uh, opening and build of a pre-release kit from War of the Spark. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry for the little hiccup in the middle. Hopefully, it wasn't too distracting. Thanks so much, and as always, may your pulls ever be better.